Yo, yo, what's up designers? Welcome back to the channel, it's Jimmy. Today I'm gonna be talking to you guys about computers and industrial design. What computers do you need to become an industrial designer, do industrial design tasks? So some of you guys have probably just exited out of school. Maybe you just recently graduated high school, which I would say congratulations. Maybe you just finished up your first year of industrial design training at the college that you attended to, and you're looking to get a brand new computer. Well, it's summertime now, and so you have plenty of time to do some research, and luckily you found yourself on my YouTube channel, so good job there. So you guys probably noticed I am not in my usual studio set. Well, technically I am. Usually I have my camera right here and then I'm sitting on that black chair and I am talking to you guys, but I am going to be moving within the next couple weeks, which means a brand new set right there is a pile of computer parts. I just need one more part to come in and then I could begin actually building my own computer, which I cannot wait. I'm using a MacBook Pro at the moment. I bought it in 2014 and that's my main computer since 2014. So six years ago, I bought that computer and I did all of my industrial design student work on. And so let's go ahead and jump into computers and what kind you will need as an industrial designer. So let's start off from the very, very basic electronics. And that is a tablet or an iPad. Can you get away with only using an iPad? What if it's the brand new, super large iPad Pro? Can I just use that? And the answer is no. It's nice to have that and no, you know, now with the whole pencil and the drawing experience on an iPad, it's extremely nice to have and as you go throughout your industrial design career, you'll probably end up accumulating the iPad as you go along. But to make it your main computer is just not going to work. And the reason is because we're gonna be running industrial design programs that need a full operating system and not just a mobile operating system like on the iPad. So you're gonna need to run a full OS. And so that leads me into, well, what kind of programs are we gonna use for industrial designers? Well, there are gonna be a couple of main ones. Uh, there's slight variations depending on where you learn, where you go to school, for, but for the most part, the programs that I've seen most industrial designers use and ones that I've used personally is SolidWorks, which is a 3D modeling program. You have Keyshot, which is a rendering program. You have uh, Adobe Suite, which is like Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, and all the other ones that they also provide. So these three things, including such as, you know, regular stuff like PowerPoint, PDF, and all of that other stuff, perhaps a video editing program, that's all gonna be within the industrial design scope. Some variations, uh, maybe 3D modeling programs would be something like Fusion 360, Rhino, 3ds Max, some of these other programs. And I just gotta say, they're all about the same, in the same realm of 3D building and 3D modeling. So they're gonna use very similar parts as well. So these programs are only run on full operating systems. Therefore, you need to have a device that has a full operating system such as a laptop. So laptops are gonna be the next best thing above an iPad and of course you can use a laptop. So which laptop should you get? Well, honestly guys, the short answer is almost anything. If you can install these programs open them and run them, meaning they're compatible, meaning that the hardware is compatible with the software, then you're pretty much in the clear. As a student, you don't really need so much demand when it comes to devices. You're still learning. Um, you might not have a sensibility to, oh, this program isn't running so smoothly, you know, because you're just learning. If anything, you're running slower than the than the devices and the programs themselves. Eventually you'll get better and you'll be faster than the programs and you'll start thinking, man, adding these fillets, adding these features, modeling this thing is so slow, I need a faster PC. You'll eventually get there, but as a student, you won't be there quite yet. So honestly guys, if you can get any laptop that can run these programs compat compatibility wise, then you're in the clear. When I went to school, I've seen so many students use all kinds of computers. I've seen students use computers and old laptops that were like $500, $600, $700 was the norm all the way up into students that ran $3,000 laptops. And so 
pretty much almost any laptop will work and I'm gonna tell you guys about my setup when I was going to school and now thinking back about it and knowing all the computer stuff that I do now, it was definitely not the most efficient setup to run but I still did it anyways. And so that leads me into what kind of OS do you need? Can you get a Mac or do you have to go with Windows? Well, let's talk about it. For Keyshot, which is the rendering program, it's offered in both Mac and Windows and they're just both as good. For Adobe Suite, it is also run on Mac and on Windows. But here is the problem. It is with SolidWorks. So most likely, if you're gonna be an industrial designer, you're gonna have to learn SolidWorks. SolidWorks is the main 3D modeling program for industrial designers in America. And so in, uh, industrial designers work very closely with mechanical engineers and mechanical engineers also learn SolidWorks as well. So if you use the same program as mechanical engineers and it's also the standard program, then of course you're gonna be running SolidWorks. And so SolidWorks is primarily a Windows application. And so you, that kind of makes industrial designers kind of force us to go into the Windows realm. Of course, you can always get a Mac, and so this is leading me into my story and my setup for when I was actually going to school. So I ended up getting here my 2014 MacBook Pro, which I still use today. It's 2020 now, so six years later, I still use it as my primary PC. That's why I'm so excited to build my tower right here, but what I did was since you do need Windows to run SolidWorks, I had to boot camp my Mac. So if you really, really want a Mac for some reason, just like I did, because they're so well built, they're so nice, they're, they're awesome, I love Mac. Uh, I love specifically the MacBook Pros. And so I really wanted to get a MacBook Pro, so I learned that you could actually boot camp your MacBook Pro. It's a very simple thing to do. You can install Windows essentially on your Mac. It's all legitimate stuff. Apple allows you to do this. They give you software built into the computer to allow you to boot camp and install Windows on your Mac. So you're good with that. It's not nothing crazy, nothing hacky, nothing like jailbreaking your Mac, nothing weird or third party. It's actually official and legitimate from Apple. So if you wanted to do that, go ahead and do that. That's what I did. The drawbacks with that is that with a laptop, there's not usually a lot of memory space. And so when you boot camp your computer, what you have to do is partition your hard drive. And so what that means is you're actually dividing your hard drive in whichever ratio. And essentially you're installing Windows on the other half that you partition your hard drive. This means that if you have like only 500 gigabytes of space on your Mac and then you're dividing it in half, that means you only have about 250 gigabytes per Windows operating system, Mac and window. And so that's gonna be very, very limiting. And I definitely ran into some memory issues when I was personally doing that. If I could go back, I would definitely get more memory space. The other, or I guess I should say storage space. The other thing I wanted to mention too was that I actually used an integrated graphics card, meaning that it wasn't a dedicated separate graphics card. This means that the computer wasn't as powerful or efficient as it really should be. But honestly guys, none of that really matters because with my integrated graphics and my partition drive on a Mac that was boot camp, I still was able to produce some very awesome work and graduate at the top of my class. And so it's not gonna be the most efficient thing. And thinking back now, I should have just got a separate Windows laptop to run everything. It probably would have been way faster and way smoother. However, again, guys, I was still able to create some really awesome work with such an inefficient setup, such as a boot camped Mac with integrated graphics and a half the hard drive space. So guys, whichever laptop you wanna get, most likely it is gonna work for you as long as the programs are compatible. You guys are probably wondering, well, just Jimmy, just give me some laptops that I can just look into and buy. Okay, sure. So 
some of the laptops that I've had experience with and that I've seen other designers use are the Dell Precision laptops. Those are ones that are very nice for kind of professionals like us using 3D modeling and rendering and all that stuff. So the Dell Precision laptops are decent. I use that at work. Another one are the Lenovo laptop workstations. I've seen a lot of designers use that to do their work. But the one, honestly, the one that I really, really liked and that I was looking into was the Razer Blade 15 Studio Edition. Now this laptop is very expensive. It's not a cheap laptop by any means, but the graphics card in it is insane, especially in the body of a portable laptop. And so if you can afford it, go ahead and get the Razer Blade 15 Studio Edition. That thing is a monster. Okay, so then this leads me into towers and PCs. Well, of course, if a laptop can run industrial design programs, and of course, a desktop can. So I wanna to talk to you guys then about the ultimate setup for industrial designers, students, and professionals. So it's really, really good if you can afford it to have both a at-home tower, which is your power machine, it's your beast, it's the one that does the heavy lifting, and you also have a laptop as well for those moments when you have to go to work or you have to go to school or you're going to your internship where you can work on the go. And so when you need to actually go home and do some of those heavy renderings, cranking up those settings, go ahead and use your at-home PC with a lot more power and cooling and all of that processing goodness. And so if you can afford it, get the laptop and also get the tower. And if you can afford it some more, go ahead and get the iPad as well. So let me talk to you guys about building a PC versus buying a PC. So when you build a PC, you get to pick every single part that you want and it's gonna be a custom build exactly to what you need it to be. Of course, this is gonna require a lot of research on your part, but using PC Part Picker, this website, I'll leave it down in the description, it really helps helps you pick each individual part and making sure and double checking that everything is compatible with each other. And it also gives you at the very bottom how much you are going to spend on this PC build. If you were to go ahead and buy a computer, which is something that I've always done essentially my whole life, it's very easy. But the problem is that you're gonna be spending a little bit more money and you're gonna be getting some random parts that you probably never have heard about or you probably have never heard about any parts in a computer anyways, but they're probably going to give you some weird, you know, un off brand or maybe a power supply that's been sitting around in another computer and they threw it into your computer. But it's going to be easy, you know, you buy a computer and you just set it up and you use it. Whereas building one, it might take a little bit more skill. I just want to let you guys know that with all parts being equal from the bought computer and the built computer, with every single part being equal, the built computer will be cheaper than the pre-built computer. And that's because the labor was on you. You decided to pick all of the parts and assemble it yourself. Whereas the other one, you have paid someone else to put it together for you. And so there's a convenience factor versus a do-it-yourself custom factor. Me personally, I usually always have been the purchasing of a pre-built PC, but now knowing what I know now and with the world of YouTube and seeing how you can build a PC for so easy, just look up how to build a PC on YouTube and you could just learn how to do it yourself. It's actually really, really easy. And so I would say, you know, try to go ahead and do some research if you are into this kind of thing and build build your own PC. So now I want to tell you guys about my own PC. So my PC is ridiculous. It's something that I really don't need at the moment. You guys know I'm using my old six-year-old MacBook Pro laptop. And so I really don't need the PC that I'm going to build. But since I do use my PC so long, I've kept my MacBook Pro for six years now as my main primary PC. I wanted my next one to be extremely powerful and last me just as long or even longer. So with a PC build, 
Usually there are two main parts in a PC. It's the processor and the graphics card. So which processor and which graphics card did I go with? Well, I ended up going with a Threadripper, an AMD 3960X. When I first heard about these Threadrippers, that is the catalyst that got me to wanting to build a PC. And so I went with a ridiculous processor. It was the most expensive part in this whole build. You really don't need it, but again, like I said, I wanted this computer to be a screamer and to last me for a really, really long time. And so I ended up with the 3960X and oh my goodness here, let me show it to you guys. Boom, right there. Look how big that processor is. Usually processors aren't rectangular, they're just square, but this Threadripper is no joke, my friends. And so the next thing is the graphics card. I ended up going with a consumer card, the 2080 Ti, which is ah, right here. It is the Founders Edition. Boom. Heck yeah. So a lot of people say that if you're going to be building a professional computer, you know, you got to build a workstation. A workstation usually uses a Quadro card as their graphics card. And Quadro cards are known to be the professional grade graphics card. They're very secure. They're very reliable. They're very efficient at running 3D modeling programs. And 3D modeling programs actually design their software to run off of these Quadro cards. And so these Quadro cards are are going to be the most efficient card to get. The problem with them is that they're very expensive, much more expensive than regular consumer cards. And so the graphics card that I use in my PC for work is the Quadro P4000, which is a very good graphics card for doing industrial design tasks. It's a decently priced card around six, seven hundred to eight hundred dollars. So I was going to get that card for my PC build, but then I discovered that there was an RTX 4000, and so that that one was only just about $100 more, but the specs were much better. But then I discovered the Quadro RTX 5000, and I was like, heck yeah, I want to get that one. That is the one to get. Sadly, that card was about $2,200, $2,300, which was a little bit out of my price range. And then I discovered the 2080 Ti. It's not a Quadro card. It is more of a gamer card, a consumer card. But the specs on it was very similar to the RTX 5000 for $1,000 less. And so I decided, you know, I'm just gonna go ahead with the consumer card, get similar specs to the Quadro. I really honestly don't think I need the professional grade graphics card. And again, guys, I gotta mention, I designed a lot of industrial design projects with an integrated graphics card built into a boot camped Mac. And so if I could do that on such an inefficient setup such as that, I think I could get away with not using a Quadro card. So for the next video, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and begin building my PC and taking you guys along with me. And with this build, I'm gonna be running programs such as maybe SolidWorks. I have a PC at work where I do pretty much almost all my SolidWorks stuff. So I really don't need to use SolidWorks too much, but I know I'll do it every once in a while. So maybe I'll run SolidWorks, but honestly, that's not gonna be too much of what I'm gonna be using. I'll probably do a lot of Keyshot renderings and a lot, a lot, a lot of video editings, not only for my clients, but also for you guys, the YouTube channel, heck yeah. Oh yeah, and I wanted to just tell you guys, this is gonna be a $5,000 PC build, which is extremely expensive. I know it costs a lot of money. Please don't feel intimidated or feel like you also have to spend that much money. If you guys are interested in building your own computer, I've actually built a couple of different ones on PC Part Picker with different kinds of budget depending on how much you can afford. So if you can only afford $1,500, go ahead and check out that PC Part 
picker link down there for the $1,500 one. I have another build for $2,000, another build for $3,000, and then I have my build for around $5,000. That's including the monitor, guys. So go ahead and check that all out if you're interested in building your own PC. All of them are optimized to run all of these industrial design programs that I've been talking to you guys about. So go ahead and check that out. Guys, I'm extremely excited to build my PC. I've been getting into learning how to use C4D, Cinema 4D. So I'm gonna be going ahead and dabbling with computer animation. So that's gonna be very, very cool. But I'm so excited to start building this PC, guys. And I hope you guys wanna join the ride and come along with me. If you do, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Follow along with me as I build this PC in the next video. If you learned a thing or two, go ahead. I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button. Helps out the channel, helps out the YouTube algorithm to share it with more people like us. All right, guys, my name is Jimmy. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.